In this episode of the How To series, I show you how I utilize pre-season, how I do pre-season friendlies, and we get ready for the first game of the English Premier League season. Okay, so before we start, just a bit of an update on how the series is going to progress. So this weekend, this video here, is gonna be how we utilize pre-season and get ready for the first game of the season. Next weekend, Sunday, 2 p.m. as always, I will show you how we've got on in the first half of the season. I'll play the first half of the season off camera, bring you back next weekend and show you how we actually do with that first half of the season. And then the following video, which will be the last video in the series, will be how we've got on at the end of the season. You know, was it a successful one? Was it not? Do we need to make more additions in the summer? All that sort of stuff. And by that point, I think you should have a pretty good idea on how I play football manager and it gives you some tips on how you should play it as well. So let's get on with the rest of this video. And we're going to be doing a bit of transfer business. We're going to be doing a bit of everything really, but it is mainly going to be focused on pre-season. Now, if we go into our fixtures and results, we have played three pre-season games already which so far, because I've been busy doing all the other stuff, I've not been playing these games. I've been designating it to my assistant manager. He's on with that while I've been busy doing transfer deals and squad planning and all this sort of stuff. And if you are happy for your assistant manager to take care of pre-season friendlies, you absolutely can do that all the way through. The one negative I will say for it is if we have a look in our tactic area, all these players here, any of our squad players basically, they're... Uh, Matt Sharpness is not going anywhere because the assistant manager tends not to make too many wholesale changes and things like that. So I will now be taking charge of these for the remainder. I think it's three pre-season friends. We've got against Celtic, Getafe and Salernitana. Probably said that wrong. I'll be taking care of the pre-season friends for them three in a bid to try and get some Matt Sharpness into the rest of my squad. I usually do manage all the pre-season friendlies and I probably would have had a few more in there. If you do want to add more friendlies to it, if you click on Arrange Friendly, you can see your calendar here as to when you've got games. And obviously the Premier League season starts there, so there's not really any room for us now to add more friendlies into this. But if this was your pre-season area, what I tend to do is leave at least two days between games, occasionally three days between games, and I will just, so where we've got a friendly there against Salernitana, if that was a pre-season friendly there, I'd probably click there for a friendly. If you come up here, you can either arrange one friendly match at a time or you can do multiple friendlies. Now, what I might do is I might actually arrange a pre-season friendly for here. And that will be where I'm playing most of my rotational players. So we're not going to have multiple friendlies. You can arrange leagues and cups and a tour and all this sort of stuff. Just clicking them. If you want to arrange a cup, for example, you click in there. You have to have three teams. So you choose the three teams, whether you want it to be small, similar reputation, smaller reputation, very small, or if you want it to be larger, similar, smaller, very small from foreign or nearby or affiliated clubs. We're not doing a cup. We're just going to arrange one friendly for that date there. We don't want it to be too taxing. We want it to be fairly, a fairly easy one. So we just go for a very small reputation. It's literally just a fitness game. We'll have a look at who we want to do it for and we'll go with Coventry Sinks so we'll be paying them £2,017 to play in the game and we'll be generating £40,344 for it they'll be getting money for it as well probably around the same sort of fee if you're managing in a lower league situation you know especially non-league this is a great way of generating money for your club um, a lot of people will arrange pre-season friendlies against as many of the big teams as possible or the teams that are going to generate as much money. And what you can do is as you go along there, it will tell you there how much it's going to cost to get them in. Nine times out of 10, you will get more money back than you're paying out. So if we chose Celtic, for example, we're paying 90,000, but we're getting 177,000 back. Obviously that does change depending on who you are and what your reputation is and things like that. But it can be a good way to get money into the bank account. I generally don't worry too much about that because the bank account isn't my, we just confirm this, the bank account isn't my concern when it comes to finances. That is not my problem. That's down to the board. 
all that concerns me is my scouting budget, my wage budget, my transfer budget. And mainly as long as I'm within the transfer, uh, within the wage budget, then I'm fine, I'm doing my job. So I don't pay too much attention to that. Like I say, it's down to the board. But if you want to incorporate that into your save, if you want to help build your club's bank balance over time and you're in a non-league situation, by all means, take advantage of the friendly side of things. Now, we're getting to transfers because we've got a friendly coming up very very soon. Now, in the terms of the transfers, we've got a lot of players that are going in and going out and all this sort of stuff. Let's have a look at what's coming in. We really only want uh, players that are coming in, not staff. There you go. We'll, we'll untick that because we don't want the staff. So, Nicolas Pepe, he's we've put in an offer for him and he's going to join us as soon as his work permit comes through, provided his work permit does come through. He is a classic example of how you shouldn't pay attention to what you know of a player in real life. So in real life, Nicolas Pepe, as an Arsenal supporter, I know he has flopped at Arsenal big time. Now, you, we can have the debate all day long whether that's his fault, whether it's Arteta's fault, whether it's a mixture of the both, whatever. Either way, he has flopped big time at Arsenal. So a lot of people will look at this, maybe not a lot, some people will look at this and say, oh, he's rubbish. I, I know what he's done at Arsenal. I ain't bringing him into football. Pay no attention to it. I've said this before and used Romelo Lukaku as an example. This is another example. When you look at his attributes, he's got the attributes to be an excellent AMR for us or even an AML because he can play out there. So he's hopefully going to be coming in very soon. And I forget what we've offered for him now, but we have made an offer. Patson Dakar as a striker is going to be coming in, hopefully. We've offered him a contract. He's got electric pace. He can play as a press before he can also do the advance forward. He can be a complete forward or poacher, whatever you want him to be. I like the look of him and I think he's going to do a job for us. You know, we've already got Ollie Watkins up top and Cameron Archer. So he will just provide extra bit of extra bit of a boost for us, extra bit of impetus, so to speak. Then when we go, if we go back into the transfers and we look at the transfer history, obviously, if you've been watching this so far, you'll know about Dominic Livakovic, the fact that we brought him in as our backup goalkeeper about eight and a half million. Tino Livramento has also come in from Southampton for 34 million. Obviously, in real life, he is with Newcastle now. But when I look at him again, he's got acceleration, decent bit of pace. He can cross the ball. He can play right and left. He's the kind of player that I look for in a wing back, basically. Someone with pace that can cross the ball and is reasonable at tackling and whatever else. 20 years old, he's got oodles and oodles of potential. And the only downside is he will have a minimum fee release clause in his contract of 66 million. But the fact we signed him for 34, if we do sell him for 66 million, that's a very handsome profit for us. And as Aston Villa, we do need to bear that sort of stuff in mind. These are the players that have gone from the club. Robin Olsen was the most recent, 3.9, living to going up to 4.8. With Livramento's 34 million, I can't show you at the moment, but I think it's something like 10 million up front, and then the rest of it is in instalments and after he's played 50 league games and all that sort of stuff. So let's see how we get on with the transfers. I'm going to get into the game now against Celtic, the pre-season friendly. I'll bring you back once we are ready to start the game and I'll show you how I go about utilising my pre-season friendlies to analyse my squad. Okay, so here we are then, about to get into the match. I'll bring you the starting lineup to begin with. We've got Martinez in goal, Digny left back, Livramento right back, Diego Carlos and Esri Consa as the centre-backs. Douglas Luiz at the base of the midfield with Kamara and Tillemans in front. Coutinho on the left, McGinn on the right and Watkins up top. Now, obviously, we have got players away on holiday and injured. So, Jacob Ramsey is out injured for the next couple of months, potentially. Courtney House is out for another three weeks. And then, Leon Bailey and Cameron Archer will be back from their holiday in time for our next preseason friendly, but they're not here for this one. Obviously, Leon Bailey would have gone in here and John McGinn would have started somewhere around there. If we have a look at John McGinn, he can play a whole array of positions, but he does prefer to be either a ball winning midfielder or box to box midfielder luckily that covers both of them positions so he might come in for Kamara might come in for Tillemans depends on what I think at the time on the bench as well obviously Matt Cash drops down to the bench because of Tino Livramento coming in 
We do have a few of the youngsters. So we've got Kerr Smith, who's a central midfielder, can play at right back. He's 18 years old, two-star current ability, four to five-star potential. We want to try and give him some game time during the course of the season, see how he gets on. Josh Feeney, likewise, two-star current ability, three-and-a-half to four-and-a-half-star potential. Centre-back, 18 years old, English. Then we have Amari Kellerman, who can play in any of the attacking midfield positions. Ideally, is a striker. He's very strong on his left foot, but weak on his right. But he does have three-and-a-half to four-and-a-half-star potential, two-star current potential. 17-year-old English talent would be great if we could get him some game time as well. And then we've got Rory Wilson, who's not quite on the same level. He's one and a half star current ability, three and a half star, maybe two and a half star potential. 17 years old. But he does have a transfer value of 8.8 .8 to 10 and a half million. So with all of these youngsters, we need to try and give them some game time, generate a bit of interest in them because Kellerman as well is potentially up to 30 million for Kellerman. If we look at Feeney, up to 17 and a half million. And for Kerr Smith, up to 15 and a half million for him as well. So there's transfer money that can be had from them players. But if they're just sitting in our team doing nothing, then they're not really going to get any sort of transfer value at all. So let's get into the game. I'll show you how I actually l set up my pre-season camera angles and all that sort of stuff. Because for me, pre-season, as well as getting fitness levels into your players... It's also about observing how you play. Now, not everybody does it this way. Some people will do it completely different. Like I said, some people just assign it to their um, assistant manager and be done with it. But for me, I like to be able to look at how my team's lining up. Right, we've got all this. Don't leave that. Now, it's going to start off very slow. So we're going to the settings. For pre -set, normally I would have it set. Come here. Come on. That's how I'd normally have it for the normal during the season matches. And I'd have it on key highlights as well. I have replays turned off. I don't particularly need to see them. I have that switched up to about here and those to there. And that's basically how I have it during the normal season. However, during pre-season, I click on extended highlights. And then I go to this one, data analyst. Now, play about with this as you see fit to see whether... Again, that's how I tend to have it. And the reason why I have it like this is you can see all of the pitch pretty much, except for a little bit down here, but you'll get the gist of it. And you can see from kickoff, we're playing the 4-3-3 formation. So straight away, you can see you've got your right back in Livermento, your left back in Luca Dinia, then you've got Diego Carlos and Esri Conza here. Then this will be Douglas Luiz. That will be Kamara. This will be Tillemans. Then you've got Watkins and your two wide players, Coutinho and McGinn. Now, the reason why I like this view is because you can see how they line up both in defence and attack, whether, the, you know, if the other team scores against you. And the fact we're playing Celtic, we're playing a team that is very capable of scoring against us. You can see whether you conceded those goals because a player drifted out of position or anything like that. And it just enables you to make the odd tweak to your tactic as you may need to in games that don't really mean anything. So we'll carry on with this game for the time being. I might not show you... That is actually a little bit quick for me, so I will just dial that down. No, this way. A tad. And yeah, this is basically how I look at and analyse my position. So we got... So they've won the ball back there. That was Livermento giving that away. Obviously, you'd be able to see that on a TV angle as well. You can't see what's going on down there, unfortunately. And that's why as well, if you do want to get the whole pitch, you can zoom out a little bit more as well, or keep zooming out until you can see the whole pitch. I don't think it's overly important. We'll probably go with that for the time being. But the Kamara there done well to win the ball back, but the highlights now come to an end. So Celtic have a free kick, ball into the box. It's not been cleared effectively. And that should be fine for... It's gone out for a corner. So we can also see here how we're lining up at the corner. So that's the corner for them. This is Livermento on the near post. We've got a row of defenders here and we've got a few defenders here. 
And at the point where the ball's about to be struck, which is right there, you can then see how we're lining up with our defenders in that area as well. You can also see that they've got two players back. We've only got Coutinho, who's there. So the ball comes in, partially defended. It's been defended. Now Coutinho has it and the highlight's ended. But what you could have seen there was whether we caught up with Coutinho to provide support in a counter-attack, but presumably we didn't on that occasion. So McGregor again with the ball, almost won back there by Livermento. Tillemans coming out to support him. We're keeping them out on, on this side of the field at the moment and that ball's gone wide. So what I'll do is I'll bring you back at half-time and I'll show you what I do at half-time with my substitutions and all that sort of stuff. It's basically all change. Okay, so here we are at half-time. I've just delivered my team talk. What I'll now do is go into my tactics screen and I'm going to make some substitutions. So I'm going to bring Matty Cash on for Livermet. I always start the game with what I consider to be my first choice 11 because I want them playing together, getting some cohesion together, some understanding, all that sort of stuff. So Marvellous Nakamba, he likes to play in the defensive midfield role here. He's not great as a deep line playmaker though. He prefers to be a ball winning midfielder or defensive midfielder. But he can play box to box and ball winning there. So we'll bear that in mind. Callum Chambers will bring on as the right-sided centre-back for Ke Esri Konsa. Aaron Ramsey, he can do this area here. So what we could actually do, who, who else have we got? The dog, he's going out, so I'm not going to bring... So what we do is we bring him in for Tillemans and we switch him to a deep-line playmaker on support. And then Marvellous Nakamba can come in and we can switch him to being a ball-winning midfielder on defence. So we've still got the ball-winning midfielder and a deep-line playmaker. They've just swapped positions. We'll leave Bubakar Kamara because we haven't really got anyone other than Dodonka that we might bring on later on in the second half. We've already brought Callum James on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring on Amari Kellerman for Ollie Watkins. No, actually, I'm going to bring on for John McGinn and play him over on the right-hand side. It's not where he prefers to play, but he's a youngster, we can blend him into that if we identify that as a position that we need him to play in. Obviously, ordinarily, we'd, if once the Nicholas Pepe transfer goes in, Pepe would be there and we'd be able to swap other players around. So that's basically all the substitutes I'm going to make now. Once I've got a proper full 11 for it, I do tend to swap six, seven players, and then on the hour mark, I'll do the other three or four players. We'll also change Martinez for Livakovic as well. And we can get into the second half now. Now, what I will say, I'm going to see, let it play through for a little bit to see if we get a corner come up. Because I would like to show you how we line up on court. It's nothing spectacular or anything like that. I mean, it's one all. Celtic have been easily the better team so far. But the ball there from Kellerman to Kamara, that's pretty loose ball from Kamara back to Nakamba. Diego Carlos goes back to Livakovic, who gives it to Chambers. But you can see on the field how we are lining up, how we are in attack. There's our front three there. And then we've got Kamara getting forward. Nakamba, who would normally be a little bit further back. Dingney over here. But we lost the player. So we've got Cash over there. Chambers, Carlos, Nakamba, Dingney. Coutinho. What could... Have we lost the player? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. No. So Kamara, Nakamba. Oh, and there's Ramsey over there. So he ideally should be a little bit more inside here. That's where I thought we'd lost the player because he was kind of out of position a little bit. They're lining up. So again, you can see it there. You've got the two centre-backs here. They're not in any danger. They've got their attacker there. There's two of them to handle him. You've got Nakamba, Ramsey and Kamara. Then you've got full-back here, full-back there. So the full-backs are providing the width while the inside forwards come inside. 
ball through Folly Watkins and it's just gone wide. Now one thing I have noticed, and I'm going to check in our tactics to see if we've got work ball into the box switched on, which we haven't. That's something I had noticed because we didn't seem to be, Ollie Watkins seems to be taking a shot straight away. Now you can click work ball into box on. Alternatively, what you can do is you can go into the player's instructions and you can actually, and I seem to have forgotten how to do that. Here we go. And you can actually edit these things here and you can just, if you want the, your striker to drill more, you can click drill more, all that sort of stuff. Passing directness, you can up or, or rotate. When it comes to shooting, you can put on there, shoot more often, shoot less often. So if you don't want to put work ball into box on, you can click shoot less often. And it means that he will not shoot from outside the box quite as much as what he is at the moment, or at least that's what it should be doing. And then you can obviously unclick that if you want to as well. So we'll just do that and just persevere with the with the game for the moment. So this is us in a defensive situation. So we've got the near post being marked. We've got our row here with F3 here. That's how we were lining up in the first half as well. Celtic still have the ball. They're looking dangerous and they've scored. Days and Maida with the goal. Livakovic probably a bit disappointed to be beaten like that, to be quite honest. But it is what it is. Like I, said, I don't pay too much attention to results. I mean, obviously, I don't want us to get absolutely smashed or anything. It's interesting that Livakovic has been given the captain's armband for the game. So here's Matt Cash with a throw into Kellerman, to Chambers, to Nakamba, Diego Carlos. Watkins is in the box and he scores. Ollie Watkins, the assist from Diego Carlos. Ollie Watkins gets us the goal. It's 2 2 in the pre season friendly. Now we've hit the hour mark. I'll make a few more substitutions. I hate it when it does this. So we bring on Kerr Smith. No, we won't. We bring on Josh. Can he use his left foot? No, he can't. That's a bit of a worry. Oh, this. This has been the case in every FM for so many years. Right, who's the better of the two? I think Kerr Smith is probably the better. So we'll bring. Here we go again. So Kerr Smith can come on here. Can Callum Chambers use his left foot? No. So that's a weakness straight away. We'll bring Dodonka on for Kamara because I don't want him to tire out too much. And we we'll give Rory Wilson a go up front for Ollie Watkins as well. He's, he's got a couple of goals for us, Ollie Watkins. So he's had a good day. This is what I mean. Don't worry too much about, oh, you know, I don't want to lose a pre-season friendly and all that. It doesn't do your morale massive damage. As long as, like I say, as long as you're not losing 5-6-0 in every single pre-season friendly. We do seem a bit weak at corners, I have to admit. So I probably will look at our corner kick defensive side of things to see if we can improve that in any way, shape or form. So yeah, pre-season friendlies pretty much are just used to be able to identify weaknesses within the tactic that you're playing, any tweaks you want to make. You know, we might turn on work ball into box, for example, might just set all the strikers to shoot less often or something. But yeah, just identify where you think you're going wrong, where the other team is taking advantage. Celtic with their first goal, it was basically a ball over the top here for the striker to run onto, which straight away made me think I need to keep an eye on that because if we concede more goals like that, then maybe I need to drop my defensive line a little bit because we're not quick enough to keep up with the opposition strikers. And it might be a case if you do that on a game-by-game -game basis, look at the opposition, see what their attack is like, their wide men, their striker, or do, you know, do they have pace? Do they outrun your your defenders? If so, make that change before the game. Ball is box. Wilson, oh, blocked. It is Ramsey to Nakamba. Cash, Chambers, and the highlight just comes to an end. So there you go. I'll bring you back shortly when we have news on transfers and things like that if there's anything else I need to bring you up to speed on. 
Okay, so we're coming to the end of our pre-season friendly against Getafe, the very next friendly. We started the game with um, a very good, strong 11. We're finishing the game with a fully rotated 11, with the exception of Martinez in goal, who I've just kept in goal. But all the outfield players have changed. And we are much weaker. And as you can see, we made them we we've done six changes um, at half time. The other four changes we've done after 60 minutes. We can see the goal is 72 minutes, which shows the strength in depth is not quite there for us if we want to have a full rotated team. But Nicolas Pepe getting two goals in the first half was really good to see. Good confidence booster for him. Leon Bailey, who came on a substitute at half time for Philip Coutinho, he got on the score sheet as well. Gives me a bit of food for thought. Do I want Coutinho out there? Do I want Bailey in there? Maybe in the next pre-season friendly, I'll start with Bailey to see what he can do from the start, or maybe I'll bring him on from the bench, and if he can do it from the bench, gives me even more food for thought. So, yeah, just some more examples of how advantageous taking control of pre-season friendlies are for yourself. Tillemans with the free kick. Oh, is it the crossbar? So it's been a comfortable 3-1 win. We've been the better team against Katafa, you'd expect us to be as well. And yeah, it's just an example of how you can get a lot from your team by taking control of pre-season friendlies. We've put out some more staff adverts. Now, in terms of this, we've got a transfer budget of 26 million at the moment. If you want to keep it 26 million, just keep it that. If you want to go low on all of these, it'll take your transfer budget up to 34 million. I wouldn't advise doing that because the players don't react well if they have low um, bonuses sort of thing. The one thing that does mean the most to us is the Premier League. So I'd click high to see how that... And it means we use 5 million of our transfer budget to give them a high bonus depending on their performance in the Premier League. I'm going to do that. Sometimes you... I mean, if you want to click all of it, you can, but you're going to lose a lot of your... a lot of your transfer budget if you do that. I'll click confirm on there. I'm happy with that. In terms of what's come in and what's gone out... So, transfer history, Nicolas Pepe and Patson Daka have both now joined. Nicolas Pepe is on loan until the end of the season, then it becomes permanent. Patson Daka is a straight 13.75 million up front, going on to 23 million, potentially including add-ons. We do still, if we go to future transfers, there's nothing in there. We have made some offers although that would suggest we're not. So Leander Dodonka does look like he's going to be leaving the club, by the way. There's several offers in for Ben Crisen. I've been rejecting Seb Ravens. I am still on the lookout for a left-back, but I have also found someone that is in our scouted players list, Kelvin Bassey. So at the moment, we've only got a marginal scout report on him. He can do left-back and centre-back, and I think that would be quite useful for what we need. Either way, his stamina and strength is absolutely amazing. Six foot one, he is a centre-back. His heading is guaranteed 15. His jumping reach is guaranteed 15. He can use his left foot, he's weak on the right foot. But he'd be back up for Luca Digna on the left, but can also play on the left-sided two in the centre. I am considering just putting in an offer for him now. We've discussed the availability with the agent. I actually want somewhere between 60 and a half to 20 million. He wants 67 to 81,000 a week. They're not prepared to budge on that. I'll say I'm not happy, but I'm still going to make an offer for him anyway. So the far end of that is 20 million. We will go in with seven and a half million. We'll do installments for seven and a half million. And then we'll do after 50 league games will give you another 5 million. What I will probably do is just up that to 6 to make it 21. So you can see down there, potential value 21, just to make it worth their time. Let's see what they say. Oh, I hate when I do this. So they've come back. They now want it up to 27 million. So after international appearances, that means nothing for me. I'm going to take that out. So per league appearance, if we can bring this down to 5 we we'll put it up to five and a half because then that makes that 22. So then we'll be paying the three monthly installments for seven and a half million, 50 league games, 7.25, and then 150 grand per appearance up to 10 games. Let's see what they say now. No, nope, they're still not happy. They want it up to 26. 
So we've got a bit of negotiating to do here. Take this down to nine. Okay, so they're prepared to accept a value, total value of 24 million. I think that'd be a pretty good deal if we get that. We're only paying five and a half million up front. And that's a good bit of defence covered. So what's he got here? We'll, no, we're not going to play you in your preferred position. So we'll remove that. Leave the rest of it as it is. And then come into here. We're not giving you a yearly wage rise. I'm not paying you to sit on a substitute's bench either. Let's see if we can take that. I want to get him as close. He's going to go up to probably about 85, 87 million. 84, okay. So we're not too far off. And he's agreed to 82. So that's fine. I'm happy with that. Follow so I did have a look at Romeo Lavia, but it says that there you go, it says here would want a minimum fee release clause of 75 million. We can't afford 75 million, so I've just moved on from Romeo Lavia. It was just a potential option in the centre of midfield. He had oodles and oodles of potential, seems to be my favourite saying at the moment. So Brentford have made an offer for Aaron Ramsey. Total value is 17.5 million. I've got to admit, I am tempted. Because I don't think he's going to really improve on that. And so after one international game for England, we'd get 3.2 million. Mm, that feels like a bit cheaty from the AI there. I don't know if he's ever going to play for England. So that's 3.2 million of that we're probably not going to get. After he played 10 league games, so we'll probably get that one. We'll definitely get that one. So I'm going to reject that. What's it say up here first? Despite Bruce, my class prefer to... So he's not going to be too disappointed by it either. So we'll just reject that for the time being. See if they come back with something a bit better. Yeah, I'm, I weren't happy with the... So what we've got here. So more now... We'll click into here to see what the total value is. So I've got a, an agreement with him that if they, if anyone comes up with 12 and a half million, which that doesn't fall into that, so we can reject that one. And West Ham overall deal. No, that's not the case. So we'll reject that as well. So we've got a new coach has come in. So he's Constantin Karate. So we look at our staffing, we're getting there. I have put out an advert for a fitness coach, but we're not going to be able to have that now. So coaches allowed Aston Villa. Let's see what the board say. They'll probably say no, because I've only just arrived. I'm new to the club, so they're not going to be too happy with that. The Donker for Future, I'm not worried about him. Salatina coming up, okay. Just really want to see what the board come back with. Let's make loan approach for Archer. They can bog off for that. He's only going to be a fringe player as well. There's no, what's it say up here? Despite Leicester's bid, he prefers Norwich. So he's not going to be too disheartened by that. Sports scientists coming in. Wonderful stuff. Search ends. And it's been rejected. There you go. Due to the financial restraint, I mean, to be fair, that is sensible because they are 27 million in debt at the moment, which is uh, quite a substantial amount of money. We're not going to, well, we might as well. We're, we're criticising this training. I don't normally do it when it's a player that's pretty much on the way out of the club, but he is still here for the time being. There's no solid interest in him. Okay, so I'll bring you back probably when we're at the start of the season, about to go into our first game of the season. If we look at our fixture list, I can't remember if I've shown you this already anyway, we start at home to Manchester City. Now, obviously, in real life, Aston Villa have got a phenomenal home record where they've won 15, 16 games on the trot at the moment. I don't think we're replicating that. But Brighton away. Then we've got Europa Conference League. Is that the actual conflict we're going to be in, or is that going to be a qualifier? Third qualifier round. I just want to see the stages. So there's a fourth qualifying round. So I'm assuming we must 
go in and have to qualify. Aston Villa enter league path fourth qualifier. Yeah, so we're going to have to go through a qualifying round. I mean, considering the teams that are in it, this is absolutely a competition. They want us to reach semi-final. I'm actually looking at winning this because we're Aston Villa. We should be better than most teams in this competition. So, yeah, I'll bring you back at the start of pre-season and let you know any other transfer deals we've done and things like that. And then that will be the end of the episode. I'll see you in a second. Okay, so we've got an offer in here for Bubakar Kamara from Bayern Munich, offering 30 million up front, 7 million in two in six monthly instalments, then nine and a half million after he's played 20 games. Up here it says my client will become unsettled if he's not allowed to speak to FC Bayern. Now, I'm going to reject this offer. I'm, I'm taking a risk because the potential value is in excess of 46 and a half million, which is above his range. So I am taking a big risk by doing this, but I'm going to reject it because hopefully he'll then come back. He wants to discuss his future and the agree we the fee we agree on will hopefully be 50 million plus. So let's just click forward. There you go. He wants to discuss his future, discuss the issue with Kamara, the finances. I mean, it does say here as well, I have the same goals as you here and I want you to stick around and help us achieve them. If we fail to qualify for the Europa Champions League this season, then I'll let you go. Oh, that seems a bit much. I'll block the move to give myself... No, I'm going to go with finances. Let's see what he's suggesting. So he's going 48. Usually I would just go with that, but I'm thinking it's only one and a half million. There you go. So he's happy with 50 million. So... We are in a position that if Bayern Munich or anybody else comes in with an offer of 50 million plus for, or 50 million for Bubakar Kamara, that we have to let him go. I have already come to the conclusion that we're going to keep Leander Tadonka around. Nobody's putting in a suitable offer. I'm not interested in loading him out for the season and then letting him go after he's played a certain amount of games. This is a team we're likely to go. I might have to replace Nicolas Pepe because he picked up a slight injury. We have got a couple of days to go, so we'll see how he feels come game day. But this is likely to be our starting 11. And as you can see, we've not really made much by way of changes from a team that we would have had originally, other than Pepe has come in. But we have got Livakovic, or Livakovic, whatever his name is. Livermento, Calvin Bassi, we have signed, by the way. We got him for 14 and a half million. It's uh, 14 and a half, rising to 24. He's going to be on the bench. Tino Livermento can play left or right, prefers the right. Calvin Batty can come in on the left side of the defensive two. He is a downgrade on Diego Carlos, but he is good support on the left. And Matty Cash, no, that's the wrong one. And then he can come in on for Luca Digne. Again, a bit of a downgrade, but still is there. We do have Courtney House, who's still coming back from injury, that can play on the left-hand side as well. So I think we've got a reasonable squad here. This is a squad I'm quite happy with, I'm quite comfortable with. Obviously, if Bubakar Kamara goes, we will need to get replacement because we've only got really Yuri Tillemans that could step into that role. Um, Aaron Ramsey is nowhere near the level, and neither is marvellous Nakamba. I have brought Amari Kellerman into our first team squad. So he is with the team now. The only other thing I want to say to do as well, it's probably about the only part of training I actually get involved in, is going into the mentoring section. I would usually do this earlier, but I completely forgot. I just asked the assistant to assign it. I've got Amari Kellerman in there. I'm happy. If you want to make, if you want to do these groups yourself, do them yourself. But I'm happy with what the assistant manager has given us. So we can click continue on that one. At the moment, nobody has come in for Bubakar Kamara, but we have still got a few weeks left of the transfer window. So the next time you see me will be probably December the 31st when we come back for the January transfer window. I won't take you through the whole of the January transfer window in the following episode, but I'll show you if there's any gaps in the squad that I feel we need to bring players in for and just give you a general heads up on how the season's gone so far. I think this is a reasonable squad, quite happy with it. One other thing to show you as well is we're playing Atletico Pamplona in the UEFA Conference League qualifier. They are a Spanish first division team, La Liga team. 
it says fifth there, but that's because they haven't played any games yet. If we look at their history as an overview, they got promoted from the second division in 1819. They've been in the top flight ever since with finishes of 10th, 11th, 10th, 7th. So they're basically a mid-table Spanish team. We should have no problems getting past them. So wish me luck, folks. Drop it in the comments. So good luck, Damo. Hope it goes well. I'll see you in the next episode. Please leave a like on the video. Subscribe if you want to see more. And I'll see you next weekend. Thank you very much for watching. Bye. Mm -hmm.